up until the 19, early uh, 60s and going into the 70s, actually, the most prominent thing that you found in the parapsychological literature was what was called the decline effect. That is, the more you did it, the worse you got. That seemed just logically inconsistent to me. So I began to think about why that would happen, why you would get worse the more you did. And it struck me that that although the early pioneers in consciousness research were pioneers genuinely uh, because they began to apply scientific methods to the study of consciousness, they weren't very good at understanding how it worked or how to work with it. Uh, the protocols that they were using, guessing dice or guessing Zener cards, that kind of thing, uh, people got bored. It was boring. And the more you did it, the more bored you got. And the more bored you got, the less well you accomplished it. So people seem to do much better with free response work. And what remote viewing is doing is it's kind of like a Google search. Instead of using a word, it is intention that is the critical part. And in fact, let me say here, uh, this may be the most important thing I'm going to tell you if you're interested in remote viewing. The key to all access to non-local consciousness is the ability to attain and sustain intentioned, focused awareness. That's why meditators routinely do better than non-meditators at remote viewing. Now, it doesn't matter how you meditate. It doesn't seem to make any difference. I mean, it can be anything you like. But the reason they teach meditation in martial art dojos and Tibetan monasteries and Catholic seminaries and, and uh, Jewish Kabbalistic schools is that just on a <coughs> empirical pragmatic way, over the millennia, human beings have learned that meditation gives you the access to open to non-local consciousness. So if you wanna be a good remote viewer, the thing I would suggest to you that is most important is that you develop the daily practice of meditation. How you do it is much less important than that you do it because meditation gives you the ability to attain and sustain intention-focused awareness, and it allows you to let the um, normal sensory impressions of your neuroanatomy, it's hot, it's cold, it's dark, it's light, it's windy, you know, all those things that make up most of what we are call thought. Oh, I'm outside. It's very chilly. You know, what you're really doing is reporting a sensory impression. And so what meditation does is allow you to let that all fall into the background. It's hard to explain, but when you do it, you'll understand. And it, it allows you to open to this part of, of yourself that is the non-local part. This is the part that existed before you incarnated, and it is the part that is going to continue after you die. So that ability, intentioned, focused awareness, that's the key.